everyone and welcome back to the APN lifestyle channel and yeah we got some cool stuff to do today I think but I want to show you guys something first yes we have chickens the yard's a mess we've been doing some spring cleanup kind of and the stuff is like blowing all through here I gotta clean this bush off and cut everything down at some point but yeah they're not dead they're just rolling around. All right, so I got pulled away because FedEx showed up with a order of stuff from my wife's home business. My wife's home business, not my wife's. I only have one. Um, yeah. We got two roosters. They grew up together from babies, so they sometimes squabble a little bit, but not enough to hurt each other. And we got five new uh, I want to say they're not Rhode Island Reds, they're New Hampshire Reds, is what they are. And three Bard Rocks. We had a lot, but we had we had a Bobcat incident last, um, last summer. And it basically took five in one day of what we had. I think it was like one New Hampshire Red and uh, multiple Bard Rocks. But uh, yeah, we got a bunch of eggs in here I had to collect. This is their domain. It's a small coop, you know, nothing too much. I got water, food, just cleaned them out today so they got fresh shaving and all that good stuff. So the main purpose for the video, I'm headed down to the APN film spot, pretty much. I'm gonna have to run down and grab a tripod real quick before we get to the next segment. But I got a box full of stuff here from the outdoor sportsman that you saw in the beginning of this from our trip. So yeah, we're gonna be setting up my tackle box, cleaning out the old stuff, switching some stuff around, maybe hanging stuff on our wall up here. And uh, yeah, what about that? So I'm gonna grab the tripod and we'll get back to going through the tackle box. So we got the tripod, and of course we were riding on something that I had on the GoPro. It is a Yamaha Rhino 450 Special Edition 4x4. It's what we use around the house. Uh, my grandparents live down the driveway, down that way, a little ways. We live up here, so I use it, just go back and forth usually between my house and what I call the man cave, my location where I record from I'm pretty sure I don't actually know what year it is off the top of my head I'm I want to say it's a 0405 maybe might be newer than that I'm not sure but yeah let's get to why we were really in this video we got a box full of goodies here a tackle box that needs to be cleaned out so let me get the tripod set up and we'll start on that all right so we are back as you can see here I found an old mystery tackle box I don't remember where. I think it was in the back of my truck, actually. Sorry, I have a winter green mint in my mouth. I think that's what it is, anyway. Candy uh, I have in my truck, but... Old mystery tackle box. Don't even know what's in here, and I think it's more than what normally is in the box, because I probably put two and combined it into one. So we're going to go through that first. So this is something I was thinking about doing again. I was getting the mystery tackle boxes. I kind of like them, and it's some gear, and it's something to do here on the channel. Catch go, little sticker. It's old. Probably, you, if you're really a fishing fanatic, you've probably already seen those stuff. But I haven't actually paid attention to it. We got a chatterbait. We'll hang that up on our wall. We got another chatterbait, different color. This one's kind of got 
yellow, white, and brown action. This one's got kind of white, silvery, blackish tail on it. All right, we got another, it says a shad, basically a crankbait. Little diver there. It's kind of a cool one. I'll be hanging that one on my wall. Uh, what are these? Somatis baits. Uh, not really sure what they are. Not for human consumption, so don't eat these. Uh, they're kind of just a regular word put on a jig, jig head or something. Vial bug, they kind of look like a crawfish, these ones do. They're neat. And I'm guessing you could put them on these. These are offset worm hooks. These actually look uh, finely crafted hooks. These actually look like they're pretty cool. They actually look like some of the other hooks I'm about to go through with you. So, they don't look like they have a cutting point. They have a really small barb. They're probably, I'm going to say size 3. Yep, they are size 3. So, decent hooks. Definitely be putting those with my collection. And these ones are pretty decent too. I don't know if they have... Sometimes they have like... Where they can shut up how they like hook them onto the worm the best way. I mean, we can pretty well figure it out. So yeah, that's it for those. That mystery tackle box. It does look like that might have been all that came in this box. So let me know if you want to see more mystery tackle boxes. I'll get a subscription again. I don't know if we're going to go with this box or this box. The Pro is a little bit more than the other one, but you also get a little bit more useful stuff, I find. A little bit more quantity and stuff. So yeah, what we're really going to mainly go over is this stuff in this box. All kinds of stuff that I bought. So I spent a decent amount of money for a whole season's worth of stuff. But let's get into the tackle box first. So, we should open these first because these are a mess and everything's stuck together. I'm going to try not to stick a hook in my finger, but you know. This one's, this one's actually one of my favorite crankbaits. It actually looks like it could be a yellow perch or something, a sunfish maybe to other fish in the water. Really great one. This one's just kind of a random one. I actually have seen somebody catch a fish on this exact lure. So, it is possible. I just don't use them a lot. Uh, this looks more of like a knockoff baby bass. Don't think we're going to need that. We're going to throw that away, probably. Um, this is a bobber. Not much special about that. Uh, looks like another random craw. I think I have more of those. I'm just going to throw that one. Um, some sinkers. I wish I had brought down some disinfectant wipes. Because I would just wipe down this whole tackle box keep it good and clean another bobber nothing special there uh pliers have looked in better shape but hey they're fishing pliers just to remove a hook if we can't get it with our hands here's a steel lead hook a bunch of random stuff just thrown in the top of this tackle box and most of it's going to get thrown looks like a shad bait another craw another craw here with a rusty hook in it I'm gonna throw all those, get rid of them. Uh, not really sure what to think of that. I, it kind of looks like a mixture between a craw and some kind of insect. We're getting rid of that. Old Konami, getting rid of that. Really small bobber for a really small game. And that's it for the two top compartments. So, we're actually gonna set these mystery tackle box stuff aside and we'll put them up on our wall after and kind of put our trash over there and the stuff we want to keep we'll keep kind of right up here that one's rusty too we'll get rid of that hook too with the steel lead all right so in here what do we got we got color changing stuff they, these look like konamis i think i'll probably end up keeping them in the top of the tackle box for now they're coming out these haven't even been opened i don't think they feel like they haven't. Pro series, they look they look still like good good lures. Fine worm baits to use on a hook. An offset hook. These ones 
if they've been open, they've they've been sealed right back up. But haven't used these, I don't think. Kind of look like Konami's. All work similarly. I got a little Snell here for the small game. These ones, I believe, were out of a mystery tackle box. These are Katana Neko hooks. If anybody knows like what you use some of these different hooks for, let me know. Obviously, they're to catch fish. I'm not being that smart, but you know some of them are specialty hooks for certain things. We got size 4 deep throat hooks. I probably didn't have to buy as much as I thought I did. I probably should have looked in here first, but this is a mackerel jig. There's probably nothing wrong with it, but all the hooks are rusty. It's been in salt water. I'm just gonna get rid of it. When it comes mackerel season, we'll go get a couple more jigs. Another steel lead hook. This one actually doesn't look rusty, but I don't know if I'm gonna keep it or not. We'll set it aside for now. I don't really use those hooks anyway. Had them for years. These look like more craws or designed to bring the big bite to your line, fortified with bite juice, whatever that is. They're a battle bug is what they're calling them. So we might keep these. They still feel good and moist like they haven't dried out over the winter, which is what I'm looking for. If they get good and dried out, they get brittle. And yeah, they're good. They're good. Not too bad. Did I put these in here? I don't think I did. No, I didn't. They're over here. So I got two nice hooks. Both size three. Same things. These are nice hooks, actually. I'll be using those. Uh, jerk shads, these are. These ones have not been opened, I don't think. And this actually does show a diagram on how, you know, the hook them up the best. So those are good. Looks like we got, that's an old case. Looks like we got another snell here. Another snell. This is all just old stuff. Ew, this is sticky too. Uh, we got quantity five. I mean, these are classic worm hooks that says, you know, simple, simple more hooks to throw on there. Put those in our hook pile. That's an empty one. Cutting points, I use these a lot. These are size five, a little bit bigger than the ones that I bought. I needed some different size variations. Power bait bass kit. These ones, they feel kind of greasy. I think they're good though. They look like they're good and sealed up on the inside. So, so I don't know. Watermelon shaky worms. Uh, they do work, I've seen them work before, but. Let me see, size five off shank, offset shank worm hook. Got some more deep throat ones there. These ones, I haven't actually seen them work. I think these are more for, you know, I think these are more for like big bass stuff. They're still good, I'll still hold on to them. Um, creature bait, I don't really care for these. They just, everything feels a little bit slimy in here. I'm going to have to throw those creature baits, I think. Another Snell's, a little bit bigger ones, though. Uh, old lure, old worm. Uh, this looks like swim bait, jig head. Simple. I don't even know what I'd use those for. I don't use them a lot. Uh, these are mackerel jigs, or I don't know what they're actually called. Bridgeport diamond jigs, but they're great for mackerel fishing. Um, we got some advanced drop shot hooks. Haven't really used those. Don't really do a lot of drop shotting when I fish, but you know, it's nice to learn new stuff. A couple barrel swivels. All of this stuff is really old equipment, old hooks, but they're probably going to be thrown. That whole setup is old. Um, looks like we got an old Snell in here. This is why we're cleaning out this tackle box, because it's full of junk that I've switched out quick and thrown in the box. This looks decent. We'll hold on to it. This is a steel lead. That looks decent. We'll hold on to that. It's good if you're worried about pickerel or anything on your line. Decent hook still. Gold one. We'll probably hold on to that. That one's an old bait. We don't need it. We have 
hundreds. Throw that old bobber. We might need that for something. We'll keep that here handy. All right, now we're getting into the drawer where everything gets a little bit. There's one of those wild things. I don't really use them. They're a little bit too big, unless you're fishing like really big bass game. Although bass will swallow it down. That's a huge weight, nothing I'll use. Um, there's one of those offset hooks set up like that. It worked, I did catch stuff off of it. Another old lure, another old bait. These are all soft worms. Ugh, that one. This whole drawer feels a little, uh, a little nasty. This guy, I gotta try to salvage here. The hook's still good. The bait's dried out, but that's okay. And I say bait, I mean the soft worm. These are awesome bass jigs. Uh, I watch Lake Fork Guy on YouTube. He uses these bass jigs a lot. Definitely saving that. That's one of my favorite jigs to use, and they do work. There's another offset shank hook. I'm not gonna keep that one though. Drop shot one that I barely used. Um, yeah, and this bait in here like dried out like tremendously and ran throughout my whole tray. Wow, I don't even know what that is, but it melted. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely have to get something to clean that out. These are jigs, usually for mackerel. They're all rusty. We're throwing those. That's an old barrel swivel case. This hook looks half fine, but it's just been in here for a while. That's old barrel swivel. We'll pull these out. They'll probably be savable. A little small weight. So yeah, that's the whole top drawer. We're gonna have to get something to clean that out. Um, bear with me, I'm gonna clean the tray and then we'll move on to the other ones. All right, so I got me a rag cleaned off this whole top tray. Um, now we're gonna pull this open and pull out these individual trays. So, a few things that we're gonna wanna keep in here. Obviously, these things work like a charm, craws, uh, these things I found worked too really well. Once again, I don't go through a lot of this stuff because I mainly use my Konami stuff. This is kind of like a bass shig. This is another mystery tackle box lure. This one I haven't used a lot of. It is a nice, the tail spins on it. This is a nice lure. Love the looks of it. I'll hold on to that. Here's another bass jig. Lake Fort guy. Another plug there for him. If you haven't gone and watched his stuff and you like this kind of fishing content, you can't get any better than him on YouTube. And he's got Lake Life channel as well, which is more of a vlogging series of him around his house instead of all just fishing. Here's a little yellow perch lure. I, I've seen those work before. They do work, the right movement. They look almost like a real fish too. So we're gonna leave all of these things in here. We're gonna leave these in here. I wanna stick these bass jigs back in here to the side. I'll definitely use those again. Another offset shank, set that there. I got another jig head here that we can use at some point. Looks like that. Fancy one, we're gonna stick this one right back in here too. This one should go in our hard bait section. This is more of our jig and soft baits for jig heads and stuff. So that's what we got going on in that one. Now first, before we close this up, I wanna look and see if there's anything else I wanna add to this. I don't really see anything up here on the wall that I really wanna add. So yes, we're gonna close this. This one's done, set that aside. Next one, all kinds of Konami's and rubber bands on this one. Rubber bands you put around them because the hook will pull through after a couple of catches. Just helps preserve your lure a little longer. That is not a pro tip, that's just 
that's just what I do. Obviously, I probably shouldn't have to worry about losing too many because I have a whole tray here. But believe it or not, there is some of these that I don't really use. So we're going to pull through some of these. We're going to keep a few of them, but we're not going to keep a lot of these colors just because a lot of them I don't use. That's why they're still in here. We'll put a few more of those back. Um, we're probably going to empty out a box. So, or a bag rather. Ooh, these are, you see, these are the off brand ones. And if you can't tell, slimy, like really slimy. So, we're just, that's why I don't use those ones because the color runs out of them if the box gets a little bit hot. Uh, it's just because they're the off brand ones. Slime just coming out of this tray right now. The real Gary Yamamoto's, I call them Konami's, but they're pretty much the same thing. Gary Yamamoto's is what I use primarily. Uh, they are good, they're more expensive, and they, they don't do that. So, and like I said, this box has been sitting since the later part of the summer. Well, no, because I did fish in the later part of the summer. So, late late fall, early fall, something like that. I stopped really fishing for the year. Um, obviously, you can. I just didn't do a lot of it with work and stuff, primarily. All right. So, we've got a whole tray emptied out here. And we're going to put some of the new stuff back in. Uh, so, we're right, right now, we're going to set this one aside. There's certain ones I want to get rid of. I just don't want them to get all nasty from the bench all right a couple crank baits in here this is all of our hard baits really a uh, couple crank baits divers whatever you want to call them uh, I got a few of them in here a lot of these have treble hooks in them and I will be hooked up in no time uh, I got a lot of spinner baits in the bottom we're actually going to take this spinner bait here that we have up on our shelf and we're going to put that in here as well it's a new concept one. I don't know how new it is because the box I think is a year or two old. So we'll fold up the bottom of this. Stick that in there for when we want to use it on one of our trips. Both of those crankbaits are in there. Everything in here looks nice. Looks good. Here's awesome topwater lure. Floats right on top. A deep diver. Another craw. Those ones are good. I had one that I really, really loved, uh, crankbait, and I went and casted it one day and misjudged my cast. It hit the cement wall and busted the diver off of it, and it broke. This one looks very familiar or similar to it, so I would have used that this season. As you can see, the elastic's still on the bottom. I'm going to put these out. just poke myself. I'm going to put these other hard baits right in this tray as well along this one's kind of a soft hard bait mix i'm probably going to save that out for now we'll put this crankbait back in that's probably something that i used and just didn't put back in the tray that's going back in here and we got a couple of new ones to add but before we do that let's close up this set it aside for a minute so we got other stuff in these side compartments I do love this this tackle box. So much room. That bobbers underneath there. I'll get that. Bobbers. Got a few more in there. These other ones are gonna join them. That's kind of my bobber container. Only this one just doesn't fit in there. Uh, that one's probably gonna come out of my tackle box anyway. Um, Line, brand new line, tri-line 12 pound test, monofilament. We're probably gonna use that. Uh, I gotta reline these poles up here, at least main two. I don't know if you guys even seen that, I'm pretty sure you have. But uh, yeah, so monofilament 12 pound test. That's gonna go right back in there. We're gonna need to use that. So now I wanna get into the new 
stuff. So, this box I went to Outdoor Sportsman. You guys locally know where that is. So, uh, Outdoor Sportsman's a shop that you're probably going to see a lot of on the channel, depending on how much we do this. And, uh, yeah, good place to go through. So, Craws I knew worked really well. All these new baits, by the way, these new uh, Konamis and everything, for the most part, are going to go in this top tray, right where I keep everything, because I use them a lot. I bought the stuff that I use a lot. Uh, these are Fat Baby Craws, some new stuff that I bought. Yes, the price tags are on there. I don't care. It's, the stuff is can be pricey here, but it's a good place. Uh, as you see it in front of the beginning, beautiful in there. He's done a lot of work to it recently, and the place is just coming along good. And he has so much more room to expand. So, yeah, Fat Baby Craws, we picked up those. Those are going in our selection here. This big bobber, that's going back in there in the low corner because it kind of slants down. I uh, got two more bobbers here as well. We're going to pull this tag off if we can. Yep, there we go. Two more bobbers. That's going to go in our little side tray here. Those are always a good thing to have. Restock in the box here. And uh, let's go to a regular other uh, soft baits. These are different ones that I've never tried before. Uh, these ones here are my most popular ones. These are ones that I really like to use. The dark green with a lime green tip, they just work tremendously. I go through these like crazy because the fish just smash these in the summertime. So we got those, and I tried this one because it has a little bit of a red sparkleish tone in the darker area, and then the lime green tips, tip, so I figured it might work just as well. And we got two packages of the dark green with lime green tips as well. So those are going in here. All kinds of good baits to use. Trying to figure out the best way to put those in there. All right. I got some baby, they call baby bass. It's the Gary Yamamoto's. They're the smaller versions of these guys here. So I got some of those to try too. Those always seem to work pretty well. I haven't actually used them very much before. I've gone fishing with other people that have. Gary Yamamoto's, these lime green with the sparkles in them. They work great as well. I go through these almost just as much as I go through the dark green with the lime green tip. So we added those. These ones are also not quite as good as the green ones and the dark ones with the lime green tip, but they work pretty good too. So I got another package of those to add. And as you can see, almost none of those colors were in that tray because I've gone through them all. Um, Snells, we got some more of those. We're gonna set those there for now. More Snells. We got a bunch of hooks in here. More barrel swivels, we're gonna set those in there. I think I had another package of barrel swivels here somewhere. Maybe not. I just saved out a few. Here, we'll put those back in there right on top. These are all hooks. Size 4. Deep throat. Wide gap ones. These work good with bass. Where they have the great big wide mouth. These are super easy to get back out. Um, cutting points. These ones work awesome too. Set the hook really well. Uh, never had any problems with them. They work tremendous. Um, so yeah, those are a few hooks that we got. And we are going to add the other hooks that I took out. We're going to add those right back into the tackle box here. Right on that side compartment. Put all the rest of the hooks. And they will never stay there. They will always end up back in the regular box. All these snells and everything. We're adding these back into here. Um, jig heads. These I'm actually going to take out and hang on my wall here. We'll hang those up there for now. Uh, these katana ones, we'll hold on to those. Um, put my little extra little compartment over here with the barrel swivels. I put kind of the random stuff, like these weights. These bash jig, I mean these uh, mackerel jigs we'll put in there. Uh, the steel lead we're going to put in there. This other random mackerel jig we'll put in there. And that. I did have a package of barrel swivels. We'll put those back in there. So that is pretty much most of the old stuff except for all of these individual baits. Uh, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with them. I don't know how good they are and I don't want to put them in the trays over here because I don't want them running in there and gelling like those other ones did. So uh, 
These are also another new bait that I just bought. This is close to the one that I had before, except it doesn't have a diver on it. And I think it has more of like a spinny action on the back. Really wanted to try this crankbait. I'm gonna put that right in the top as well. And for those of you that are on my other channel, American Pride Network, not sure when the video is coming out, but I use these on there. They're called, whatever the brand is, it doesn't matter. They're simply like a walker. They kind of buzz from side to side in the water when you're trying to fish and they worked great on the game for catching bass. I'm not sure how they're going to work in my area, but uh, we're going to try them out. Walkers, a couple of those. So we're going to put those right in the top as well. And that is pretty much all I have for new tackle in the tackle box. What I've just gone over, we got an empty box. Believe it or not, that was like $100 worth of fishing gear for the whole season. Obviously, mackerel jigs and stuff I'm going to have to buy more of come mackerel jig season. I hope to do some more filming there. Uh, but, yeah, we're going to put this little guy in the top, too. That is pretty much it. We got our pliers here. I'm going to stick those right in the top. Um, I got all the trash. These baits I'm not going to throw. I'm probably going to hang them up in here. We'll hold on to them for a while. Uh, let's see what we see if we want to use them. But I am loaded with stuff between crankbaits and everything else. Um, I'm going to leave things as they are for now. As the season progresses and I start actually fishing, we might add something into here, change things up. But for now, I think that that's a good spring cleaning and restock of the tackle box for the foreseeable future. So yeah, that is the whole new tackle box, completely loaded down. I'm going to have to realign some poles here. Definitely not today, but uh, yeah, that's where we are. My tackle box is completely cleaned, ready to go for the season. Even these two trays up here are completely empty right now. So I have a bunch of landscape to work with if I wanted to add a few more of these jigs in to try those out. I can put them in there to uh, test them. So that is it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all the newest content. If you haven't already, go check out American Pride Network. We're doing a cool series on there with the game Fishing Planet, as I talked about with those walkers, and doing a bunch of videos with fishing virtually. The game is actually pretty cool, uh, based around real life, uh, how things work. I'm not sure how close to real life, but from what I've seen, the experience is pretty pretty decent. So go and check out the videos on American Pride Network, the other channel, and we will see you guys next time.